Okay, guys, let's get started. So, uh, hello and welcome to everyone uh, for our weekly webinar. If you don't know me, please let me introduce myself. My name is Sapir, and I'm a dropshipper, and I run eBay stores for Selfrix. And each week, I do these webinars uh, for you to help you um, increase uh, your business and make it more successful and profitable. And if I can help with anything, uh, sharing my knowledge with you, then I'm happy. So today, we're going to talk about how to scale a new account on its first month. So um, if you don't know, maybe you do watching my other webinars, but I'm really dealing with a lot of new accounts. Uh, a, because I'm constantly creating or buying new accounts for Selfrix, and B, because I do work with new users on Selfrix, and um, I do uh, run their stores for them initially at the beginning uh, for the first two or three months. So I, I do uh, mess a lot with new accounts and I do have a lot of insights to share with you. So this is exactly what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, let's review our topics for today. We're gonna talk about what to expect on your first month on eBay how to scale up a brand new account versus previously used accounts, non-API version. And then we're gonna talk about the same, but um, about API, okay? Because I know you guys, some of you do use API, so we'll cover that as well. So let's talk about what to expect on your first month on eBay. So as, I, as I've mentioned, I, I deal with a lot of users, Selfix users who are new drop shippers, okay? And um, I have this project where I, I run their stores for the uh, first two months, okay? In order to just, uh, you know, base the stores and make sure uh, they're not getting suspended. And if they do, I, I deal with it as well. But they ask me a lot of questions, a lot of newbie questions, but that's okay. So I figured I should make a video about it. So, um, this is what people think will happen in the first month. They think they will start making money right, of, right from the start. And many dropshippers are unwillingly to take money out of their pocket at first, believing that they will be able to cover costs solely based on profit. And another thing I see a lot where people ask me is, um, they think they can upload a large amount of items when the account is brand new in order to speed things up. So I'm here to um, break all of these myths today. So that's not true. This is what actually happened, okay? So yeah, you probably won't make money on your first month with a brand new account. I'm not trying to make things pretty for you. I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm just trying to share with you the truth, okay? You have to adjust your expectations, okay? So your expectations for a brand new account for your first month is not to make money. Your goal is to make it through the month without getting suspended, okay? Because um, when you get suspended, there is really, it's a 50-50, it's you know what I mean? Because even if they just, um, suspend you in order to verify you, okay? Even if it's not a permanent suspe suspension, if it, even if eBay just want to verify you, you could still mess it up. Don't ask me how, <laughs> okay? But I had cases where I contacted eBay, they verified me, I answered their questions, and then two, three, four, uh, four days later, they uh, resuspended me. I mean, they suspended me again after I verified the account. Okay. And then I contacted them again and I told them, Hey, you just suspended me and then reinstated my account. And then you sus suspended me again. I mean, what else do you want? I just verified my account. Nothing has changed over the uh, two days ago when, when we last talked, but on the second time, they're not willing to open the account. So, when you get suspended, uh, you, you could also get reinstated, but it is 
50-50 chance that you get permanently suspended. So I always say, just try to avoid it altogether. If you avoid the initial suspension and you can make it through the first month, chances are you won't get suspended after this. Okay, so I, I think the best strategy is just to avoid the suspension. Okay, so, so this should be your goal. I mean, the money will come later, but you can't make money if you don't have an account. Okay, you, you see what I mean? So you'll probably have to take some money out of your pocket. While you hardly make any sales on your first month, you'll still have to pay for a monitor and a proxy at least, right? Uh, I know people who keep a VA from their day one <laughs> on dropshipping. Uh, I'm, I'm personally against it because I think that you uh, you need to learn the job first, okay? You need to become a true dropshipper first be before you can delegate uh, tasks to VA, okay? But that's just me, okay? But you do have to pay for a monitor and you do have to pay for a proxy, okay? That's not a whole lot of money, but, you know, uh, the smallest, cheapest uh, subscription in Selfrix and on API costs... Um, uh, Ninety-two dollars for your first month. Uh, no, for the first, for the sec your first uh, two months. I'm sorry. So, uh, in the proxy. So we're talking about let's say a hundred dollar per month. This is your break even. And to tell you the the complete truth, guys, because again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to adjust your expectations. You'll probably won't make. $100 in profit in your first 30 days on eBay. Okay, and the third myth I'm going to uh, break for you is you absolutely cannot upload a large amount of items uh, at once because it may, it may last at first, okay, but it could very likely get your account suspended. And as I just told you five minutes ago, the best strategy to avoid uh, to, to keep your account alive is to just avoid the first suspension at all costs, okay? At all costs. This is how I see it, okay? So as I see it from my experience, the first month is critical, okay? Um, and eBay has making it worse uh, in the last couple of months, okay? They, they really, it's getting very... <laughs> you know, annoying, they just suspend you left, right, and center without explaining first. You try to contact them, they reinstate the account, then they shut it, uh, shut it down again, and then it's uh, permanently, okay? Um, and, and even if they do reinstate the account and everything's okay, I don't like talking to them, okay? It makes me nervous. I'm constantly worried about the option that they won't reinstate my account or that I'll get suspended again and for no good reason, okay? So I'm just trying you, just avoid it altogether. Okay, so again, this is what people will think will happen, okay? And this is what actually happens, okay? When I told a client he has to pay for a monitor up front, he told me, why? Why? Why should I pay? Uh, I, I, I wanted to wait until I make, I make some profit and then out of this profit, I'll pay the subscription, but this is not how it works, okay? Like any other business, okay, even a physical business, you have to put money up front, okay? And with digital uh, businesses such as dropshipping, and I should say dropshipping in, in uh, you know, specifically dropshipping, okay? It's very, very cheap, okay? So, you know, don't get cheap on $100, okay? Because if you manage to keep your account alive for the first month, so on the second month, you can start generating more profit. And on the third month, you'll probably cover both the, the first two months that you, uh, you know, took a loss or may just broke even. And then on the third or fourth month, you'll begin to actually make a profit. And I know you guys probably hear me right now saying, what, I need to wait three or four months until I, I make an actual profit? Well, yes, because, you know, some people may say that I'm 
uh, you know, I'm a coward or I'm, I'm too slow. And there are people already making a lot of money uh, within a month or two, and that's great. But I share with you my experience. I share with you my agenda. And I'm here for the long run. So, yes, while I'm extremely anxious because, you know, I can feel it in my bones that I want to start selling already. And sometimes I have to remind myself what I'm telling you right now. But we have to be patient. Okay? We have to be patient. eBay is giving us no other way. Okay? We have to be patient. I prefer to uh, hold myself back for a month or a month and a half or two, but I know that when I make it out of the woods and I can start really working, you know, in the third month, then I'll be okay. Uh, the profit that I'll make, that I'll make will be, uh, you know, maybe not a huge one, but it will definitely, uh, you know, uh, compensate for my losses in the first or second months, okay? So now I want to talk, I talk to you how to scale up brand new account versus previously used accounts when you use the non-API version. So um, again, everything is from my experience. You're willing to disagree, okay? And if I haven't mentioned yet, you're more than welcome to leave a comment below, okay? Because we will go over them together in the end of the webinar. So I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Okay, if you disagree with me, okay, because I know there are a lot of gurus out there. Uh, not that I consider myself as a guru, because I'm not. Okay, because but I do. I, I'm aware of what other people say. Okay, people who sell courses and that kind of stuff, what they say. Okay, um, and they usually preach for just start from day one, just upload items, just start selling, and it. And 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 I, I so I also done this. Okay, I also advocated this not until uh, long ago, okay, I would start a new account and I would just start uploading items. And it went well until, in, until it didn't, okay? So what I uh, came across is that recently, the rate of permanent suspensions by eBay has increased. The reason remain unknown. Okay, so as I said, I totally advocated the method of purchasing slash creating a new account and just start working, okay? But uh, what I discovered that even if I managed to dodge the bullet, even if I managed not to get suspended for the first month, after four, five, six weeks that the account is alive and even selling, okay? Think about it, the account is a month and a half old. Boom, I get suspended permanently. Meaning they they now they can suspend you not on not on the beginning but later on when you think you're out of the woods. So it frustrated frustrated the hell out of me because I had like four or five accounts that were a month old each, and they get suspended after a month. How frustrating! How frustrating is that? I mean, it's terribly frustrating. Okay, so you know, so I started asking myself. You know, it happened to me. Uh, with four or five accounts. So I started asking myself, why? Why should they suspend me after a month? After a month where I had five, six sales, all with tracking number on time, all, you know, I left feedbacks. Every, I did everything by the book. So why suspend me after a month? So I I really don't know, guys. But I have, uh, I, I have you know, my... Uh, I suspect a couple of things which I will share with you right now. But assumingly, if the proxy is intact, because if you use a crappy proxy, uh, you know, a shared proxy that other people uh, use as well, they will suspend you for it. So assumingly that the proxy is intact, meaning you use a dedicated proxy, which is a private proxy, which uh, gives you an IP only you can use, which is, of course, more expensive, but totally worth it then the trigger has to be something else, okay? And I suspect that the trigger could be related to the account's behavior. What does it mean? It means that, and again, I don't know, it, it, they're all uh, suspicions, okay? Nothing here, you know, 
it's not that like that eBay uh, uh, released a formal announce about it, okay? It's all uh, suspicions I have, okay? But I think that, you know, eBay just sees you opening an account and start selling on it right away without the account having a, a previous history of buying or even just existing on eBay, you know, just browsing. You know, you open an account and tomorrow you you start selling. I think that triggers a suspension, okay? As I as I mentioned, the suspension for so-called uh, verification because they want to verify you, but you you try to answer the questions and they permanently suspend you. Okay, so um, I think that in order to reduce the amount of closures. If you can spare the time, of course, it is recommended to make your account a buyer account first before turning it into a store. Uh, it helped, uh, helps make you look more legit in eBay's eyes. So this is not a new information, what I'm sharing with you right now, okay? Because there are people who have preached about it, uh, you know, for, for a decade right now, okay? So, and I always laughed at these people because I, I'd say, um, I won't wait a month, I won't wait even two months to start selling. I wanna start selling right now, okay? I had, I talked to people who told me they're, they have been waiting for six months. They have been nurturing an account for six months. And then on the first day that I started selling after six months, six months of buying items, getting feedbacks, all that bullshit, they got suspended. And I would laugh at them because I told them, you waited for six months to get suspended. At least if I get suspended, it happens right away. And then I can move on immediately without stalling. But recently, you know, uh, thing, it, it got reversed. Now, if you do the previous uh, ritual, I call it, okay? If you do nurse, uh, nurture your account as a, Buy your account first, it does help. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm telling you the, the complete and utter truth. I don't know why, okay? Because eBay doesn't really admit to anything. They don't say anything formally. There are all speculations that I pick up from talking to people who are more experienced than me and from forums, okay? And I can tell you that uh, I am trying this method right now and it does work for me. Okay, so what I do is I, again, I decided to wait, to be patient. And now when I open an account, I don't turn it into a store immediately. I do like two, three weeks of browsing. Okay, so I don't connect my store to the monitor. Okay, uh, I accumulate cookies and I get some feedbacks by purchasing very cheap items. Okay, uh, really, uh, over the three weeks, I, I make maybe one or two purchases, okay? Not a big deal. And then I start uploading one to two items every other day for, you know, a month. And, you know, this actually qualifies me at least as a, a buyer, okay? The previous buyer who decided to become a seller now. Okay, so it helps, it does help, okay? Uh, so I do recommend this method right now for you. So if you can spare the time, because it, it requires you to, to wait for three weeks, okay? When, uh, when you accumulate those cookies and make those small purchases in order to get feedbacks, it actually requires you to wait for another three weeks before you can start selling but it does help substantially, okay? I discovered that even they uh, do suspend me, uh, at least when I, it's for verification purposes only, it's not like permanently. And then after I verified the account, I answered their questions, they let me go, okay? And they don't re-suspend me after three days. Okay, so you could get sales if you invest in items uh, with a very high selling history. So yeah, even, even after the first month when you didn't sell anything, okay, then starts another month, right? So this is your second month on, on eBay 
right? And on this second month, all you do is you upload one to two items every other day, okay? So uh, after your fir uh, um, first two months on eBay, you actually have no more than like 60 items, I should say, okay? Out of which you uploaded all of them on the second uh, on the second um, uh, month, not the first one, because the first one was dedicated to establish your account as a, as a buyer account. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm sorry. Even even when you upload one to two items every other day, you can still make some sales. You can, okay? But it really requires you to invest in the item research, okay? And uh, pick up items with a high selling history, which means that they have at least sold five times over the last 30 days. Okay, and then you can get up to like 20 items and, and see your first sale. Okay, after that, after those two months, okay, you can upload more items and increase it every two to three weeks until you get to about 100 to 200 items a day. Again, this is non-API, okay? So remember that the whole purpose of non-API is to, to be seen as like a manual store in AV's eyes, okay? So you can upload five items a day if it's supposed to be allegedly a manual store, right? So 100 to 200 items a day, obviously they all should be well, res uh, well researched Okay, whether you do it manually or whether you use the locator, uh, search and compare. Okay, if you don't know what the locator search and compare is, go to previous webinars I did and check it out. Okay, but um, yeah, this is the, the sequence of events. So you open a new account, you don't connect it to a monitor for three weeks, you make small purchases, one to two small purchases, you accumulate cookies, you add things to cart, you remove them, you act like a normal buyer would, okay? Then you start your second month. You upload one to two items every other day. Uh, you, you could get some sales, not a lot, but you could get some sales, okay? And then when you start, you actually start your uh, third month, then you can start, uh, you know, speeding things up and actually start working, okay? And I should also say, that it's better to use details of a real person, okay, when you open a new account. Why? In case eBay asks you to verify the account with documents. So, yeah, it happened to me as well, actually with one of my personal accounts, not a self fixed account, but my personal account, that um, they, um, on top of the, the regular questions, right, like where do you get your items and all that, they also, um, asked me to send an ID or a passport um, a photograph, okay? And they asked me to send a utility, utility bill or something that proves my address, okay? So uh, actually the account was a stealth account. So all the, the details were faked, right? So I had to pay for a guy to, you know, submit fictitious papers for me, okay? and uh, you know, it passed, but it's better to just go for um, real person's items, maybe a relative or a friend, okay? That way you don't have to pay to anyone and you can just submit the, uh, uh, the papers yourself and it will always look more legit than fictitious papers, okay? Because fictitious papers may not pass the suspension, okay? Because, you know, they could pick it up, that it's fake. Okay, now, this was all for a brand new account. If you purchase an account with a previous selling history which wasn't connected to any other monitor before, okay, it's important, or it was connected but to a non-API monitor, it makes the process a lot shorter because as, uh, you know, the, blu the blueprint that I just presented to you involves basically doing almost nothing for two months, which is very frustrating, right? Uh, you know, but, but it seems like the only way to survive nowadays, okay? Unless you're willing to, uh, you know, m take out some money, okay? And nowadays people started selling those aged accounts for a lot of money because it saves you time. 
okay but it does obviously makes the the process a lot shorter so when i purchase uh an aged ebay account okay uh, which you know uh has a previous selling history uh i do start work working with it right away but don't forget that you have to set your account on your new proxy right because i bought it from someone and the account uh used to sit on another proxy and now i transfer it onto my proxy so i change the ip right um which is not terrible in it of itself because i mean it's logical right that a person could surf from different uh networks which changes the ip but think of it again in ebay's eyes think of it how it looks if you uh also changed the ip and started selling items after the the account was dormant for a lot of times think of it looks suspicious right so i say uh wait for a couple of days and let it sink okay just let the account you know for a three maybe a week not more than a week okay just to get the account comfortable with a new proxy with a new ip okay maybe maybe even throw a little bit of browsing activity okay you can ask your va to do it and then start uploading items because if uh you transfer the the account to your possession today you put you put it on a new ip today and tomorrow you start uploading items it looks suspicious and even though the account is aged and has a history with ebay you risk triggering whatever you know a bot or whatever that could uh suspension it okay and again you want to avoid suspensions because when you get a suspension and you have to contact ebay it's a 50/50 chance okay so i just rather try to avoid it altogether so i get the account to my position i let it sink on my ip for 3 4 days not more than a week okay you don't have to exaggerate okay and then i start for 2 2 to 3 days with like no more than 10 items just to see that everything's okay you know and then i i grow for from there okay so i told you that you need to get uh to 100 or 200 items a day okay so after uh after um uh a week or maybe less that i uploaded 10 items i just uh start with 50 items and then 60 items and then 100 items and then 120 and then 150 and then 200 items and then i stop and i just keep uploading 200 items a day so this is what i do with non api now i want to tell you what i do with api so uh i admit i haven't dealt with uh api uh accounts for a long time now because uh the magic of non api is so good <laughs> i mean okay so if you don't know uh the blueprint for flagged stores right because api equals flagged stores right because uh ebay's policy doesn't allow connecting your store to a third party software that uses ebay's api in order to do um price uh monitoring or price change and all of that okay so uh by definition when you connect your store to an api monitor you will get flagged okay now most of users who use the api versions are people who uh had a previously uh you know an aged sto store an old store that was previously connected to api okay maybe before uh the change the big change in 2000 and um i think it was 2019 okay when ebay prohibited using the their api for monitoring okay um so if you had an account previously to 2019 i mean what can you do it, it's not your fault it was already existed and then ebay changed their policy okay so then you probably are a person who uses the api but there are people who buy flagged stores okay because because of their selling history and their uh you know because they're aged okay and they don't mind selling 
uh, on a flagged account because flagged account can be profitable, okay? Because but the blueprint is a little uh, different, okay? Because here you have to aim for at least 10,000 to 15,000 items in your store, okay? And here you don't upload 200 items a day, you upload 500 items a day or even more, okay? I know people who are brave enough to upload 1,000 items a day. I'm not that brave, <laughs> okay? I prefer to stop at 500, okay? Because uh, while they're, let me just put it this way. I don't know when too much is too much, okay? You know what I mean? Uh, even if you have uh, a flag store, you know, uh, with a selling history, you know, it's old, so it's more resilient. I don't know if it could get suspended because I've uploaded 1,000 items a day instead of 500. Okay, so I prefer to, you know, go uh, to stay in the safe zone, okay? So, but, but yeah, but you have to aim for this, okay? So I always say that uh, the profit you make out of a 10,000 item store, flag store, equals to about 3,000 3, items in a not flex store, a non-API store, okay? Um, but I don't wanna talk about too much flex store right now because I've already talked about it previously in uh, previous webinars and uh, so you can check it out, okay? But uh, you, you do have to get to 100 items of day, in a day, I'm sorry. So in order to match this criteria, you can use Selfix built-in locator tool for scanning the entire pages in Amazon and Walmart and upload all the items that are on, um, on that pages, okay? So again, if you're not familiar with the locator, I've made, uh, I think, two uh, entire dedicated videos to locator. Just search it on this Facebook group, okay? Uh, but yeah, so this is a lot of work maintaining an API store, okay? So when you open a new account though, okay? Even though I don't recommend uh, opening a new account and connecting it to API, but you know, it's your life, it's your business. If you want to connect your brand new account to API, be my guest, but you have to take into consideration that even though you will get flagged, it still behaves like any other new account, okay? So it means to start slow, okay? We're still trying to avoid suspension, okay? Just much like the, the non-API, okay? At least for the first month, okay? Um, so it's the same trick, uploading one to two items every other day for your first month. And another thing you have to take into consideration when you're dealing with a, a store that's connected to API is that you have to get your selling limits up every month. So every month you are authorized to ask for a limit raise from eBay. Uh, so you should do it because you are supposed to upload like 500 items a day. So it's probably that you will max out on your limits quite fast, okay? So whatever you have a possible, uh, an option, even if it's uh, uh, to pay to a person who can do it for you, if you're too scared to do it on yourself, uh, to do it yourself, just do it, okay? So uh, this is regarding uh, new accounts, okay? So I don't have anything to really renew here, okay? Because new accounts, it doesn't matter if it's API or non-API, you can go crazy with a new account, okay? You have to take it slow. So what to two items a day, okay, for your first month, which means ending your first month with no more than 60 items, right? Um, yeah, but again, if you source good items, like items with five, six, um, which have sold five to six times over the, the last 30 days, you will probably, like 90%, you will probably get sales, even with 60 items, okay? I, I managed to make sales with 10 items, okay? <laughs> but I really have to upload items that sells like crazy and it takes time to find them, okay? So uh, yeah, be patient, but it's worth it. Now, if you purchase an account with a previous selling history, so an aged account, again, you can speed up the process. So 
again, I let the account adjust to my proxy for a couple of days. Okay, same thing like the non-API. And then I start for a couple of days with like 10 items a day, just to see that everything's cleared and I'm not getting suspended, which I shouldn't because this is why I paid for uh, an aged account, okay? Because aged accounts usually don't get suspended so quickly, okay? Uh, but again, I, I prefer to do it slow because I, I constantly think how eBay sees it, how eBay's bots sees it, okay? Because it, it's all about bots. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out the triggers and avoid them. Okay, so I let the proxy, I let the account adjust to the proxy for a couple of days. Then I upload 10 items for a couple of days. Uh, and then I see that everything is okay. And I start, you know, moving to um, 100 items a day for, let's say, a week or two. See that everything's okay. I have sales. Then I increase it to 200 items a day until I get to five, 600 items a day. And then I just maintain it like this. Okay, at this point, you probably need to have a VA because uh, it's a lot of work. Okay, so maybe they should do it while you concentrate on opening uh, or acquiring new stores. Okay, and again, make sure to increase your selling limits whenever you can. Okay, so let me just pause for a moment here, guys, before we recap, because I see you already put your questions in the comments, which is great because it makes me very happy. Um, yeah. So let me just recap what uh, everything that we talked about right now, okay? And we'll go over your questions. So please, if you have a co a co questions or comments or ideas or, you know, whatever, just write them right now, okay? So we'll have time to look at them as well. Okay, so let's just review everything we've went over in this webinar. So uh, the first topic was to me asking you to adjust your expectations, okay? Because, um, you know, while it's true, it's, it's not a lie, it's true that dropshipping is a business model that is self-sustaining, Meaning, you know, if you compare dropshipping to, you know, uh, selling independently on Shopify or Amazon FBA or all, all of that other um, e-commerce um, business models, uh, uh, here you get the money first from the buyer, right? Because uh, in dropshipping, you only place the order with your supplier after the client, the buyer, ordered from you. So it's true because you do get the money up front and with that money, you can supposedly pay for your supplier. But you have to understand that when you're a new seller or when your account is new and it's connected to a new PayPal, you're in PayPal jail, okay? So that money is not available to you. It's, you can use it for your first three months or so, okay? So, yeah, dropshipping is self-sustaining, but not at first. So you do need to come with some capital, not a larger one, but with some capital from home, okay? And because eBay forces you to take it so slow, okay, because they wanna make sure that you know what you're doing, Okay, and you have to take it so painfully slow. Okay, you'll probably won't make enough sales at first to cover your expenses. Okay, so I, I really want to emphasize it, not because I'm trying to get you down or get you in a bad mood or something. I'm just trying to be realistic. Okay, and what what happens is people see courses or buy courses or see videos in you know in, in YouTube of of people who try to market themselves as experts and they try to you know tell you that you can start selling today and then you get suspended right off the bat and it's you know and then you get uh pissed off because you get got suspended and uh, you know you quit and so although it is painfully slow it's better to just accept it the way it is okay this is the reality we don't make the rules, we just have to follow them, okay? So if you'll take it slow, you'll be okay. 
okay? And if you don't believe me, you can do A-B testing for yourself. If you have an account, an eBay account, I mean, uh, that you used to buy items with, okay? Make it a seller account and then open a new account and, you know, do the same thing. Start selling on both of them from day one and see what happens to the new account versus the more aged account, okay? So this is what eBay wants, okay? For you to be on the platform for a while and then become a seller, okay? It's more safe that way, okay? And then we talked about how to scale an on-API store. So I told you guys, you have to, um, uh, if you can, again, spare the time, which I totally recommend, is just to make the account a buyer account first, okay? So even if it means just buying two or three very cheap items, but you get a, uh, you get um, a feedback for those, you know, cheap uh, items. I think people, I think uh, sellers sell one dollar items just to give feedbacks for people. I mean, this is all it meant for. Okay, so just get those two, two feedbacks, whatever, and you know, a browsing history of three weeks or so, just to you know, be more legit. Then you decrease the uh, the. Um, the odds to get suspended substantially, okay? And I told you, it's better to avoid it suspension, I mean, altogether, because if you do get suspended, you could get reinstated. I mean, I could be a little bit dramatic about it. It could be nothing, but it is so 50-50 because I talked to you so many times in my life that I honestly can explain why they would resuspend me after reinstating my account, okay? so. I'm just trying to avoid it, okay? So you uh, you dedicate three weeks to make your account uh, a buyer account, and then you you make it a business account, which will officially turn it into a store, and then you upload two items a day, and you will hardly make any sales of it. You will, but not not enough. So you actually start profiting only on month three, okay? Makes sense? This is you know, again, from my experience, okay? Um, yeah, so when you, uh, when you purchase from someone, uh, you know, a ready to use account, you can go ahead and, and start selling, but don't forget that you just change the IP of the account, okay? So you can't change the IP and start selling on the same day. It's better to change the IP, give it a couple of days, then start selling, slow and then bump it up okay and for api uh a i don't recommend at all <laughs> um connecting new stores to api but again as i told you if you do want to do it i i'm not the one who will stop you but i am going to tell you that it's the same so again you have to take it very slow two items a day just a couple of sales and from uh your second or third month you can start increasing the amount of items uh, pretty substantially, okay? So you don't have to take it so slow because you're already flagged, so, you know, whatever. And then when you get to about 500 or 600 items a day, then you can just keep it that way until you get to about uh, 10,000 to 15,000 items in your store, okay? So guys, this is everything that we talked about to get today about scaling, and now I want to see your questions. So let's go to Facebook together and, and read them. Okay, so I currently see only three comments. Guys, that's not enough uh, compared to the amount of people who's watching us right now. So please uh, leave more comments, but I'll do my best to answer them. So Connor here asks, what is a proxy? So Connor, proxy is actually, um, it's a tool to disguise your actual IP, okay? Uh, every one of us has surf on a certain network, right? Maybe it's your home network, your uh, work network, at your friends, whatever. But when we surf the internet, we get an IP, which is actually uh, sort of like our internet address, okay? And when you have multiple accounts, which you should, because this is the winning strategy strategy for uh, dropshipping today, having multiple accounts, 
you can't have those multiple accounts surfing on the same IP. They will get uh, linked to each other and potentially suspended because you have uh, you have stealth accounts, okay, accounts that are on different uh, personal details, but they are all on the same IP. So it's suspicious, and then eBay suspends you. So in order to uh, be able to have multiple eBay accounts that are unlinked to each other, we use what's called a proxy, okay, which is basically, as I told you, a tool to disguise your actual proxy. So you put a different proxy to each of your eBay accounts, and this way, each of the eBay accounts serves on allegedly different proxy, and that way, they are maintained unlinked. So I hope I answered your questions. Uh, Hamdan asks, my accounts got suspended right after listing one item, and this is why exactly what I told you guys, to start establishing your account as a buyer account first, okay? Because if you think about it, it's not a problem to open an eBay account. All you have to do is put an email address and a password, right? Because the default is a buyer account. When you open an account, eBay sees you first as a buyer, as a buyer, okay? Not as a seller, okay? So when you first establish your account as a buyer account, okay? Then you take another step towards getting off eBay's radar. radar. Okay, so uh, I also used to do it, okay? I used to just start uh, uploading items and then I got suspended again and again. And then I told, fuck it, pardon my language, but I, I, I told myself maybe I should embrace the, you know, the strategy that other people was talking about, which is, um, which is buying things first, getting a couple of feedbacks, you know, uh, browse, uh, accumulate cookies, and then it will look more legit. So I give it a try. It works well so far. I recommend that you give it a try as well. The only downside is that you uh, you sort of basically uh, postponed uh, postponed the the sales. But hey, nothing we can do. Okay. Ellen asks, how much would it cost to maintain a 15K listing on eBay plus Salesforce? What's the profit target for this store? That's an excellent question. Let me pull up my calculator. <laughs> so uh, actually, let's take a look at this together. Okay, so let's go to, I mean, the short answer, it's expensive, okay? <laughs> That's why I, uh, I, I always preach for non-API store, but let's take a look at this together. So we have an API store and we need 15K items, right? So, um, wait. Okay. So 15K would cost la about uh, right here, $650 a month, okay? And you have 4,500 orders a month, free, free orders, okay? Which are included in the price. So let's put it right here, 650. And on eBay, you have to pay for an anchor store, okay? Which is uh three three hundred dollars okay so uh we have uh, 950 so far but it's not all because an anchor store gives you one uh ten thousand items okay and so you're left with another five thousand items which you have to pay insertion fees for so if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken it costs you like 10 cents per um, per listing. Uh, so we have, I'm sorry, so we have 5,000 listings, right? Because uh, you, you pay 300 for 10,000 and we have 15,000. So it's another 5,000 listings, which you pay 10 cents, which is another $500 plus the 950 from before. It's total break even of 1,000 
$450 and add to that the VA, okay, which you will have, uh, you'll need to have a VA, okay, which let's say, uh, let's say costs another, uh, I don't know, maybe $300 a month, total of, uh, let's say one, uh, $1,800, okay, that's rounded up. 100, 100, and eight, 1,000, I'm sorry, and eight, eight uh, hundred dollars. That is your break even for your monitor and eBay and um, VA, right? So now we need to figure out what we need to do on average per day just to cover it, right? So let's divide it by 30 days a month, which gives us about $60 a day. So whatever profit you make that day, uh, you have to take out $60 for your break even, okay? Uh, so if you made $200 profit that day, it's actually $140, okay? Make sense? Uh, yeah, but I don't think that you will make only $200 in profit when you have 15K. I mean, you should do a lot more, <laughs> okay? Uh, but yeah, this is the numbers. So it's up to you to decide, okay? Um, this is why people have non-API stores now nowadays because it, it makes you, uh, allows you to stay more slim, like more more of a thinner store, more efficient store, and obviously it costs way less, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's for Alan. Tom here asks, can a, can a flagged store uh, ask for a limit increase and successfully get them? Yes, the answer is yes. While a non-flagged store can get an automatic, uh, automatically raise, okay? You just open your eBay messages and one day you see uh, this delightful message from eBay, now you can list more. Uh, in flat store, you usually don't get this delightful, delightful message, okay? You have to contact them yourself, and then they ask the, your stupid questions again, like, where do you get your items, blah, 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 and you lie to them, obviously, and they know you lie to them because you're, they see that your account is flagged, but they give you the raise anyway, but it won't be a big raise. But yeah, you can get uh, you can get a limit raise with a flat sword. Okay, Muhammad asks, what is the best step to start a new stealth account, a stealth eBay account? I tried different methods, but unfortunately they were suspended. So just try what I explained here. Okay, open a store on a, a real person's details. Okay, because um, you know just in in case you need to provide documents. Uh, documentations okay so uh and and dedicate the first three to four weeks to establish your account as a buyer account buy two three cheap items get one to two feedbacks okay uh browse through random pages add them to cart uh, you know behave like a buyer okay and then you can start selling and Again, starting very slow, so even after those three weeks, you have to start with one to two items a day, which is, I know, as I said, painfully, guys, painfully slow, okay? But it's totally worth it because from month three and onwards, you'll be able to unleash the dropshipper within you and start selling like crazy, okay? But you have to be very, very patient. Uh, can you suggest us someone... Uh, trustworthy who sells stealth EV accounts, uh, just find them online, okay? I talked about previously about a website called Askkin. Askkin, I hope I, I say it right. Askkin, yes, askkin.com. It's an entire website forum which is dedicated to suspensions. And you have here a marketplace, okay, which is have accounts for sale. Okay, so you can check this out. Uh, and you have another question. <laughs> uh, we lose many time on trying creating an eBay account because almost all suspended. Uh, we need someone who sell it. 
So yeah, as I said, you can you can go to Aspkin and buy one, but it won't help you if you don't know how to behave with those accounts. Okay, so even if you buy an account and you start bombarding with it with uh, items, uh, it it can still get suspended. Okay, so it's better to just take it very slow. I mean, this is like the my newest conclusion from my recent experience with the suspensions. It's just to take it slow. And it's so annoying because you start, you start, you want to start selling today, you want to start making money today. And now you have a setback of like a month and a half, okay, out of which you have to first make your account a buyer account and then you have to upload one item a day. And it's so frustrating, but I do believe it's the only way to get past around it, okay, because. Uh, when you get suspended, like you described right here, Muhammad, it's almost, it's a 50-50, okay? And you could get suspended permanently. Or the more annoying thing is what they did to me, which is reinstating my account and then suspend me again after three days. It happened to me a couple of times, guys. I can't tell you how annoying this is after you've already reinstated the account and then you see it's it got suspended again for no good reason, okay? So yeah, but eBay are not logical and we have to adopt the new strategy, which, which is basically just doing nothing for a month and a half, okay? So, yeah, that's it. Th this is what I have to show with you today. I hope I didn't bump you out too much, okay? Because I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to be honest with you, okay? This is all I try to do. So, um, just try it out today, okay? Make it a, a purpose, make it a, a target that you have to hit every month open two accounts every month this way until next month the it will already uh, be after the you know uh, buyer account phase and uh you know then you can start uploading one item a day so when you open okay i'm sorry let me rephrase it again what i'm trying to say is don't wait until you get suspended and left with zero stores to start nurturing new stores make it a habit of constantly nurturing new stores okay constantly nurturing new stores because now we see that it takes so long to nurture a new store until you can actually make it a store <laughs> okay so make it a habit of just doing it always in the background okay always have like two stores in the background you know in the process of becoming a store you get what i mean this way you don't have uh, you you won't get uh, pinned to the wall, okay? Because even if you get suspended, you already have an account which is, uh, you know, in the process of becoming a store. You know what I mean? Don't get, don't wait until you get suspended and left with zero stores to make this step, okay? Th this is how you play the game today, okay? Not only you have to maintain multiple stores, some of them have to be on the ready all the time okay and this is it guys for today this is uh, everything i have for you to, for today i hope it helps you i know it's frustrating it's annoying but this is what it is i mean that's it thank you for your time and have a great rest of the day bye bye